when it, there, there are two main categories of things that you just mentioned. One has to do with reparations, one has to do with civil rights, and I see them to some extent as, as separate. I see reparations as a matter of, I feel that the United States needs a moral awakening. I don't believe that we will transform as a nation until we dig deep down and do exactly as a nation what we have to do as individuals if we're to heal our lives. And if you're going to heal your life as an individual or as a nation, you need to start having a far deeper, more real conversation. And one of the things that you have to admit is the exact nature of your character defects. And you have to take a fearless moral inventory. And when you do, miracles do happen. But you can't just pour pink paint over it and pretend things aren't happening. And racism is America's original character defect. I don't believe the average American is a racist. I really don't. But I do believe the average American is woefully undereducated and underinformed about the history of race in the United States. So in my, one of the things that's been very heartening to me in my campaign is that in the whitest states in America, Iowa, New Hampshire, when I become like this American history teacher and just go through this sort of five minute thumbnail sketch of, of racial history in the United States, I can honestly report to you that by the time I get to the punchline of reparations, I get applause even in the whitest states. Most white Americans might have learned it when they were kids, but they, they haven't really, you know, the politics that we need now are politics that we go beyond the superficial. We have to know things at a deeper level, we have to look at things at a deeper level, and we have to take things in at a deeper level. So when I talk to people, slavery starts, the first slaves were brought in 1619. Slavery didn't end in this country until 1865. So, you know, I'm talking for a long time, like really take that in what that means. It's almost two and a half centuries. And then there were four to five million slaves. I realize that I'm in South Carolina, and I realize I'm, once again, I'm telling you many things you, you, you know, but you're asking me what my, what my spiel is to the country. So uh, four to five million slaves, people, enslaved persons at the end of the Civil War, General Sherman promised that 40 acres and a mule. Now, most people have heard that phrase, but really haven't thought about what that would have meant. So you were in an enslaved condition, now you're not, but what are you supposed to do? So I go through people, so most of the times it was not given, even when it was given, most of the time it was taken away. Most white people in America don't know what the black code laws were. They don't know that the white le uh, southern legislatures passed laws that, uh, that, that ensured subpar economic and social and political opportunities to black people. They don't really know about the black, uh, the, uh, the great migration, why so many went to cities like Detroit, like Cleveland. And then what, what followed after the Civil War was an, a 100 year era that we today would call domestic, uh, a domestic terror. What do you call lynchings if not domestic terrorism? What do you call Ku Klux Klan if not domestic terrorism? What do you call institutionalized white supremacy and segregation if not domestic terrorism? Now once again, to black people it's like, win up. But to white Americans, many white Americans haven't really thought about that. You know, it's like, okay, two and a half centuries followed by another hundred years of violence, right? Plus, we have a younger generation, particularly growing up, really understanding about historical trauma, understanding how whole groups of people, and then I just go through my little civil rights lesson about what happened, so that was finally challenged 100 years later, civil rights movement, 1964, the passage of the Civil Rights Act, 1965, passage of the Voting Rights Act, but even that's been chipped away at since 2013, voter suppression efforts with sliding back, mass incarceration, racial disparity and criminal sentencing, even when black, and then when you look at the, at the, uh, the, the, inc the, the wealth disparity, which was obvious at the end of, end of the Civil War, a lot of white Americans simply don't know how many times in cities such as Detroit would be a perfect example, when black wealth has been accumulated, policies would be passed that would actually thwart the accumulation of black wealth. So I think the American people are good people. I, I, we're decent people. I don't think we're better than other people. But I think we have a sense of, of fairness. So I, I do my, my little history lesson, a little bit further drawn out than I just did. And then I point out that Germany has paid $89 billion uh, to Jewish organizations 
since the end of World War II, which, you know, it, it didn't make the Holocaust not have happened. 